What is the ideal diet for prevention of coronary artery disease, and is there a scientific prescription for this diet? Well, that's an interesting question, and I'm happy to say that for the first time really ever, there is an evolving consensus among the experts about what the right diet is, and it's not that hard. This is not rocket science. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It involves a lot of fruits and vegetables, first and foremost. The average American today eats 150 pounds of sugar a year. We're not designed to eat any sugar, not in its raw form. So when you're eating all the sugar like we do day in and day out, it's like trying to keep your car running uh, on unleaded fuel when it's a diesel engine. It's not going to run right because it's not designed for that fuel. So the fuel you're designed for is not a low-carb diet like the Atkins diet. That's not it. But it's not the old-fashioned low-fat diet either. It's a diet that has a lot of fruits and vegetables in it, nine servings. People say, nine servings? How am I going to get nine servings of fruits and vegetables? It's not that tough, actually. One serving is a half a cup, which is about a handful, for simplicity's sake. So think about three servings of fruits or vegetables with each meal, or two or three, and then have a snack of an apple or a banana or berries, things like that, uh, throughout the day, and you could come up with it. The beauty of that is if you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, it fills you up. It fills you up with a lot of fluid and fiber and nutrients, but not a lot of calories, because the food that tastes good to you and I is full of calories. Because our ancestors, they didn't die from overnutrition like we do today. They died from starvation. So we have something programmed into us that tells us that thing that tastes sweet or tastes fatty tastes good to us. Because we're designed to withstand periods of starvation and scarcity. Except today, in our, the world we live in today, it's a, a, an environment of chronic overabundance. So this is where you have to rely on eating just the natural foods that you're designed to eat. As I say, fruits and vegetables are the best because they're low in calories, they're high in nutrients. And those nutrients, we've learned, sure, you can take a multivitamin, you can take a high-dose vitamin E supplement or a vitamin C supplement, but they don't do the same thing for you as eating the foods. What are you drinking every day? If you're like most Americans, it's the wrong stuff. It's like pop is our number one beverage. Pop, soda pop, Coke, whatever you want to call it. The worst beverage you could drink, full of high fructose corn syrup. It's just totally unnatural fuel that distorts your metabolic milieu, your hormones, everything. Tastes great. It's terribly nasty stuff. Never drink pop. Even diet pop is not very good. You know what our ancestors drank? They drank water. Water, pure water. That's what you need to drink, too, about eight glasses a day. If you want to, you could substitute tea for it. Tea is another great beverage, iced tea or hot tea. Green tea is ideal, but dark, uh, bl uh, black tea is fine too. Coffee is okay. In fact, as it turns out, coffee and tea are both good for increasing your metabolism, which helps to keep your weight down, may even be helpful for preventing type 2 diabetes. Coffee and tea are also good for, uh, because they're, they're high in antioxidant nutrients, but they're low in calories, like water, like fruits and vegetables. This is the high nutrient to calorie ratio foods that you're supposed to eat, that you're designed to eat. Another really important point is that you have to make sure you're getting enough protein. Our ancestors ate a lot of protein, but you know what? It was very different than the kind of protein you and I eat today. It wasn't fatty, marbled prime rib or all this luncheon meat or deep fried chicken. That stuff was not an option. They ate lean protein from things like fish and shellfish, wild game like antelope and deer. And that kind of meat is high in protein and high in omega-3 fats, a good fat, high in monounsaturated fat, that's a good fat too. But it's low in saturated fat, it wasn't burned, it didn't have any of the hormones and, and salt and preservatives and these other chemicals that we put into meat all the time. So a lot of people think meat is bad, and a lot of types of meat are bad, but protein is good. And it just has to be lean, clean protein. And you need it three times a day because protein is the nutrient that keeps you filled up. Then when you eat protein, and especially if you eat it with like fiber and water, so you have a, an apple and some protein and a glass of tea or water, you're not hungry for three or four hours because your body knows how to process this fuel. This is the fuel that you're designed to run on. And when you eat this way, you'll feel better, you'll look better. It prevents heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. This is the kind of fuel you need. A lot of people don't understand that protein is really essential for, for uh, a lot of things. Maybe the most important time to eat protein, actually, 
is the time when people don't or are least likely to eat it, and that's breakfast. Because it's hard to come up with protein for breakfast, but if you cook a little extra fish or lean meat or chicken the day before, you can save it. That makes a good protein source for the morning. Eggs are another good source. We prefer egg beaters or the omega-3 eggs, like Eglin's Best. And maybe a, a really great option, too, that I recommend is whey protein. Because whey protein is like a very high biologic quality protein, which means it's great for building muscle and repairing tissue and keeping you filled up. But it doesn't have any of those bad things in it that we were talking about, like saturated fat or salt or nitrates or hormones. You mix it with a little skim milk or water, tastes fine, has a neutral sort of taste, and it's, and it's exactly the kind of protein your body thrives on.